Hey, creative magic makers. This is Kristen here, and we are gonna dive into color energy work. I'm really looking forward to this. Um, today, what we're gonna start with is just going over the color wheel and going over a brief overview of all the different energies of color. Um, so today we're gonna talk about the color wheel. Um, I realize too, a lot of the time I think, oh, well, I just choose colors intuitively. And I do when I'm working, but that's only because I have a strong foundation of what the color wheel is, what colors work well next to each other, what colors mix well together, because I have a strong understanding of the color wheel. So we're gonna start with the color wheel today. We're gonna make one together. We're gonna talk a little bit about um, the color energy just briefly as we do our color wheel. I am excited to get started. So I'm gonna turn you down, show you what materials I have here that we're working with, and we'll get going. So I've got a couple of things on my desk here. I've got my sketchbook that I'm using. I've got a plastic plate that I use like a little mixing palette, usually for acrylic, but since we're gonna be mixing a few watercolors, I will use um, a little area here to do that. I have the color wheel that I'm gonna share with you guys. And I've got a jar of water. You will find that this project will get your water dirty kind of fast so if you start to see your colors get really ucky you just want to dump your water and get some fresh some fresh water i've got a little studio rag in case i need it to wipe up uh, my brush or any water you can also use paper towels i'm going to be using one flat brush little square head brush. It'll do perfect little lines for me for this project. And I'm just gonna use this one size brush for the whole color wheel. I just have a regular pen here that I am using for the lines. You can use a pencil, you can use a pen, you can use a marker, um, that's up to you. I find I enjoy writing with pens and when I'm working in my sketchbook, I don't worry much about how my lines are. It's a very, um, loose area for me. I don't get too upset if things are out of whack or if I draw the wrong thing. So I'm totally comfortable just using a pen for that. So in addition to that, I've got two watercolor palettes. I have this one. This is the Artist Loft watercolor set that I grab at Michael's and I really like this set. Um, but I also have this one to show you this one is a little travel set it's by secura koi watercolors and i've had this for a lot of years as you see i've got my little swatches here to help me with the color and the reason i'm showing this one is it's a little bit um a little bit different in quality. And when you're doing a color wheel or any swatching or anything like that, it's important to do it with whatever materials you plan to be using because there's gonna be differences in how the materials um, show up. This particular set is um, really softer, pretty colors and it dries with a little bit of a chalky texture. And this set has really rich colors and it's a very um, smooth texture on it. So if you do like to write with markers or um, illustration kind of pens on top of your watercolor, this set is gonna make it a little easier because of the smooth finish. Whereas this one is gonna have a little bit of a chalky finish. It's a little bit tougher to write on. Um, but these are like $5 and this is gonna be closer to like a $20 set. So it's a big jump in price, um, which is why I always suggest grabbing this guy if you're just starting. And I think this one has such a, real, a pretty arrangement of colors. 
but just wanted to let you guys know the difference of some of those kind of things. They're both pan watercolors, which means that the um, watercolor is dried in a pan like that. So before we get started, I wanna show you this color wheel and talk a little bit about it. I know that everyone has probably, um, I would think most people have seen a color wheel, but there's a lot of information on here and it can be a little intimidating as to what it is you're actually looking at. We'll first start with cutting the color wheel in half. So we've got warm colors, which starts over here at this red violet color and goes all the way up around to this yellow green. And then we've got cool colors on this side. So from the green back up to this red violet here. Where things can get complicated is like a red can be a warm red, it could be a cool red. And what that means is that you'll take the basic red, a warm red is going to hint over to this side a little bit more towards a red orange, and a cool red is gonna hint over to this side a little bit more. Same thing if someone said they have a warm blue, you could have a blue that is a little bit uh, going towards up towards the warm colors and that would be considered a warm blue or you have a blue that is going in the other direction and that would be considered a cool blue. So that's your basic warm colors, cool colors separation to start. Now the color wheel starts with the three basic colors, our red, our blue, and our yellow. These are the primary colors. These are the colors that are not made from anything else. Um, they are the basics of all color. And when you mix the red and the blue, you would get this violet right here, which is in between them. You mix the red and the yellow, you get this orange between them. The blue and the yellow, <laughs> you get the green between them. Those are called the uh, secondary colors. Then the colors in between here are your tertiary colors. So when you mix the red and the violet, you get red violet. So that is the basis of the color wheel and we are gonna go through and do all 12 of these colors today. Now this color wheel has a little extra insert in the middle and this really helps you from mixing. So, for example, <clears throat> if you are gonna do orange and you mix it with red, you are gonna get this color here. And that is if you add red. So if you take this little tab and you move it around to say yellow or green, it's gonna show you when you mix green with red, you're gonna get this color here. That is a little bit of a muddy color. You're gonna mix blue with red, you're gonna get this color here. So that's how that works. It does the same thing for the yellow. So you can take this and pop it around to any of your colors on your color wheel, and you'll see you add blue and yellow, you get green, you add red, orange, and yellow, you get this light, lighter orange. You add blue and yellow, you get green. You add blue, violet, and yellow, you're gonna get more of this um, olivey color green. And then it shows you for adding blue, it shows you for adding white, and it shows you for adding black. So whenever you add white, you are taking the color which is also called a hue, you're adding white to it and you're creating what is called a tint. So you're lightening that color. When you're adding black, you're taking the color, you're adding black to it and you're creating a shade. So with this one color, you can add white and now you've got this color, you've got its tint, you can add black, you've got its shade. So you can get really three different values out of each color. 
So that is a little quick study on how you would use a color wheel when you're working and what these little things up here mean and how they can really show you when you're looking for a certain color, how you can get there with these 12 starter colors. All right, so that said, let's get started on our wheel. So while it's great having something like this on hand when you're working, it's really invaluable to make one yourself because then you can see how the colors work firsthand instead of it just being something in this tangible form, you're actually putting it into practice and you're seeing how they work. And it, and it really sits in your memory a lot better when you actually do the project. And like I said, when you're using different colors and different color palettes, maybe you're using acrylic, maybe you're using watercolor, maybe you're using a different brand, um, they're all gonna react slightly differently and they're going to give you slightly different colors. So that is why this is a really great practice. So first thing you do is I actually, you just need the two circles. Um, I used this bucket here. This is a bucket that's got a larger front and a smaller bottom. So you can just put your bucket down, trace the circle, flip it over, put it down that way, trace the circle again, and now you've got one larger, one smaller circle. You can freehand it, you can make a nice wonky one. It doesn't have to be all special and perfect. You could still do the project no matter what. So the next thing we're gonna do after you have your circles is you want to make your guidelines for where you're gonna put your color. I'm just gonna eyeball it and freehand it. So I'm gonna start at 12 and six. I'm just gonna treat it like a clock. And then I'm gonna come over to three and nine. And then in here, I wanna get the two lines in between here. So I want 10 and 11, one and two, and then go all the way around. And now I have my guidelines for where I'm gonna put my colors. And then I can just go all the way around. I'm gonna ignore my smudge from the other day. <laughs> and I have my basic wheel for starting my color wheel. So we're gonna start with the color red. And this palette has a lot of different forms of red. So I'm just gonna try and seek out the most pure red in here. And then you can decide, I mean, you can start it anywhere. It doesn't have to be at the top. I think I'll start it in this one right here. So we'll do the three primary colors first. There is my red. Your red is grounding, security, power, passion, luck, and is associated with your root chakra. And I'm grabbing that information from the color energy section of the Free Spirit Guidebook by Carrie Berkey. You could find that on Amazon. 
if you're interested in it. Carrie's one of my good friends. So the next color I'm gonna do is yellow. So I'm gonna grab a yellow, dip in water, pick some yellow up. And we're gonna do the yellow over here. So we wanna make sure we've got one, two, three colors, yellow, one, two, three colors, one, two, three, yeah. So you wanna make sure you have three spaces and then you're gonna do your yellow. Well, the color energy associated with yellow is vitality, optimism, inner strength, and this one relates to your solar plexus chakra. Next, we're gonna do blue. Grab my blue here. And again, I'm gonna leave one, two, three spaces open and then color in the blue. So those are my primary colors. Those are the colors everything starts with. And now I'm gonna use my palette over here. And this is just, like I said, just, just a plastic um, plate that I have repurposed for palettes. And I'm gonna to mix together the red and the yellow to get my orange. And I'm gonna put the orange right here. Now my palette does have an orange on it, but the point of this is to do some mixing and to see how these colors are formed. So I'm gonna add some red and some water to my palette, and then I'm gonna grab some yellow. That one's got a little green in it there. Mix that together. And create my orange. And you'll see that that orange is a little on the yellow side. So I need to add a little bit more red to really get it to be closer To orange. While I have this one on my palette, I'm going to add a little more red to get my color in between. So I'm just adding a little more red to this color we created, this orange we created, so that I've got a little more of a red orange in the center. I'm gonna add more yellow trying to get this color back to the center color here, which that looks pretty close. And then I'm gonna add some more yellow still, because now we want this orange to be more heavily yellow between these two. So it's a mixture of this orange color and the yellow and you get sort of a golden mustard color. Now I'm gonna do the same thing as I work between 
my yellow and my blue. So I'm gonna take my blue and I'm gonna put it on my palette to mix it. Rinse it off, pick up the yellow. You're trying to make this sort of a 50-50 blue-yellow mix. to give you a green. And I totally skipped over the energy of orange, so let me go back and tell you guys that. So the orange energy is emotional, create, creative, adventurous, happiness, and it relates to your sacral, sacral chakra. And then green, the green color energy is love, balance, growth, luck, health, and nature. And this relates to your heart chakra. So that's my 50-50 yellow and blue. Now I wanna add in more yellow so that I'm mixing green and yellow and getting this middle color here. Then I gotta add blue back to get close to my center color. And then I have to add more blue to get my blue green between these two. That one creates kind of like a teal color, a deep teal. If you added white to it, you could lighten that teal up a little bit and make a tint of it. All right, now I'm going to switch and I'm going to work between my blue and my red. You can add two layers of your watercolor and you'll find that you'll get a deeper a deeper version of that color. So blue energy is communication, peace, loyalty, and healing, and it relates to your throat chakra. So I wanna take some blue again and add it to my little mixing plate. And then I gotta pick up some of the red and add that on top. Purple can sometimes be a tough color to mix, depending on the tones of what you have. Let's see how this looks. It's purple, but it's kind of dark. I'm gonna add a little more red to it, maybe. So I've got a pretty deep purple with this red and the blue. And I'm gonna add more blue to make my color to go in between these two. That makes a really pretty, almost indigo, like a deep indigo blue. So the color indigo relates to intuition, understanding, integrity, and truth. And that is your third eye chakra. 
Now I'm gonna add more red back to it and then even a little more red so that I get my color between purple and red. And purple violet would be, the energy with that color is spirituality, wisdom, imagination, and magic. And that relates to your crown chakra. So when you add red and a deep purple together, you get like a burgundy, burgundy color. So there is your color wheel. That gives you an idea of what all your colors that you're working with look like in their primary, secondary, and tertiary states so that you've got all 12 color mixing options. If you want to create a little visual for yourself, you can come through here and highlight that these are your warm colors in this direction and these are your cool colors in this direction. You can also, I created a little um, marking for yourself to remind yourself what colors these are. So if you wanted to say maybe P for primary, you can put them by the three primary colors. And then you've got your secondary colors, which are the ones red and yellow make orange, so that's a secondary blue and yellow make green, so that's a secondary. Blue and red make purple, so that's a secondary. And then lastly is your tertiary, so your primary and your secondary make your tertiary. So this is a red-orange, so we've got red and orange, that makes a red-orange. We've got orange and yellow. That makes a yellow orange. We've got green and yellow, which makes a yellow green. You have blue and green, which makes a blue green. And you've got blue and purple, which makes this sort of deep indigo color and purple and red, which makes this burgundy color. When we're talking about working with colors that are very harmonious together, um, using four colors on the color wheel that are next to each other, any four, so for example, if I used red, red-orange, orange, and yellow-orange, these four together. This is considered an analogous color way. And their work, they all work really well and harmonious together um, because they're all mixed, they're all sort of mixed together. You've got this one and this one that makes this one, You've got this one and this one that makes this one, and they're all sitting very close to each other. So this is a very harmonious color palette. You can do that with any of the, any of the colors. So you can decide to grab this one and do one, two, three, four. Or you can decide you want to use this one and do one, two, three, four. Um, any four colors or even three colors next to each other are gonna be very um, harmonious together. A lot of times you'll see someone use you know, three colors together and then one color opposite. And that gives that one color um, a very high contrast to these very 
harmonious colors. And you can do that, move around the wheel and use these three together and then use this color over here as a contrast color. So when you're working with colors that are across from each other, those are the colors that are called complementary colors. So for instance, that would be blue and orange together would be a complementary color. They have a very strong contrast. They almost vibrate when they're put next to each other. Um, however, if you mix them, if you mix blue with orange, you will likely, let me do a little bit here you will likely move into a very muddy color. So this is, this kind of gave me a little bit of a green, but it's a very deep green that I got there. So if you're getting mud when you're working with paint, you first check your water, <laughs> make sure that your mud, your color from your water is not transferring. And secondly, look to see if you're using colors that are across from each other on a color wheel. So if you put them next to each other, great. But if you start to mix them together, they'll start to create mud. So red and green together would start to create a mud color. Blue and orange together would start to create a mud color. Yellow and purple, or yeah, yellow and purple, I guess, would probably be another one that um, would make a mud color. Two colors that'll never make mud are primary. So you can always mix primary colors together. You'll never make mud. You can always mix analogous, the ones that are across, right next to each other here, and you will never make mud. All right, that is our color wheel. I hope you guys enjoyed this process and um, learning a little bit more about the different colors and how they work together. And I think that when you take the time to work with the colors you've got to do something like this and, and play around with mixing them and how they form um, different colors, you'll see, you'll see the difference of working with them later. And you're gonna get, um, you're gonna get more comfortable and more confident intuitively picking colors to work with uh, because you'll have this foundation of knowing, oh yeah, I've, I've done the, the green and the orange together and I've done the, the red and the, the blue together and I know what a roundabout color that it's going to make. There's also a difference here. You can always start with these two colors, these three colors here, and make all of these out of those colors. And then you can also decide if you want to buy the colors straight out of the tube, you are gonna get a little bit different look here. You can see that um, some of my colors on this side, even you, though I use the same watercolor palette, are very different than what I created here because here I did all the mixing from these three and on this side I played with some of the colors straight out of the palette as it is. So you can see areas like this purple I get here, that wouldn't be my favorite to play with. So that might be a color, if I buy these three at the store, come home, make myself a color wheel, I may decide I really don't like this purple, so I'm gonna go and grab myself a purple the next time I'm in the store because I like what's happening here and I'm, I like what's happening here. I just really would like a brighter purple and that will help you narrow down what colors you may need to add um, to your supply when you're working on a particular project.